that explains why there was a little gap there. All right, Victor, on you go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so my name is, uh, is Victor, and uh, I'm not from Assemblance AI. I'm from a company called uh, Synthesia. Glad we got that cleared up. So I'm really excited to be here today, and uh, it's, it's, it's quite great, I think, that's after Chris, um, who is working on detection of, uh, of deep fakes. We're coming at it from a little bit of a different perspective. We think that media production as a whole is going to be significantly changing and we're entering into this paradigm shift over the next 10 years and that's that's what we are really interested in so content creation basically so just very shortly we started coming around three years ago with a team of academics some people from the visual effects industry so some of you might know Matthias Niesner he's behind some of the most famous papers in the sort of deep fake space he's also working with Chris on the detection side of things uh, some of the stuff face forensics done by him for example um, and from a very high level, what we're interested in is what we think of as synthetic media, right? So synthetic media is kind of a catch-all term that has emerged to describe content that has been either fully or partially generated by, by an AI system. I won't get into the nitty-gritties of what we think is going to happen because I have a short time here, but we think of it as like three big changes going to happen in the world. Content creation, I'm going to speak about that today. We've heard a lot about that today as well. IP ownership, we've also heard about that today, the way we monetize likeness and think about likeness is going to change. And security and verification, like we just heard from Chris, is also going to be really important to make sure that we, we can trust what we see online. To give you a little bit of taste of like what we do, I'd like to just quickly play this video. So this is a recent campaign we did with uh, David Beckham and an NGO called Malaria No More. It should be pretty self-explanatory, so I'll just uh, play it and, and talk a little bit about it afterwards. Malaria isn't just any disease. It's the deadliest disease there's ever been. Se dice que ha matado más de la mitad de la población que ha existido. Billion men of tan murit qui. Wa ma zala taqtul tiflan kull daqiqatayn. Mais nous pouvons y mettre fin. Nous savons comment, nous en avons la possibilité. Ame ora di karvain ki zaduratan. Wa men shia rang shi se lindar en kwanju. Hivyo tunazindua kampeni ya sauti. Speak up and say, malaria must die. One voice can be powerful, but all of our voices together, then they will have to listen. Malaria must die, so millions can live. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, it took a really long time to teach David to speak nine different languages, but we finally got there in the end. Um, that's, a, that's, of course, not what happened, right? As I'm sure everyone here will know, what you just watched was a digital recreation of, a party recreation of David Beckham speaking in different languages, right? Um, so the big sort of breakthroughs that we as a company, uh, we would like to think we've, we've done in this space is two things. One is the, we can do this in 24 hours. Um, this is a fully automatic pipeline. You put in video and you get out video. There is more or less no human intervention required. That's very different from other kinds of digital humans, such as what you would do in, in big Hollywood films, for example, where creating just a few minutes of footage is insanely expensive, right? The second big thing is, uh, is uh, and I'm obviously a little bit biased here, but I think the sort of photorealism we're able to achieve is quite high. So what we do most of the time is not David Beckham, it's very boring HR videos that we take in English and we transform them into 10 different languages. And people cannot tell they're watching an edited video, right? And I think that's, that, that's quite a breakthrough in terms of thinking about synthetic media. So why is this interesting? It's interesting because the way we think about this is that this is going to be the next generation of, uh, of, of visual computing that we are building. So we're purely focused on like the visual side of things. Um, and the reason we're focused on that is that if you look at sort of media history, we've always sort of gone towards more, uh, more visual and more interactive forms of storytelling. And we're sort of somewhere in between social media and, and synthetic media, I'd say today. And we want to be able to provide that, that interface for any kind of data, right? So lots of avatars, all sort of stuff. We want to just be on top of the conversational layer and focus on producing visual output of a very high um, um, uh, fidelity. So the way we approach this problem is not so much purely thinking about like virtual humans or, or avatars. It's thinking about like visual storytelling as a whole today is really expensive, right? It requires cameras, studios, actors, post-production. It's a very long loop going from an idea to a final piece of content. So what we're trying to do is digitizing all of these four things so that in the end, we have a video generation platform that can turn any piece of data into a video. 
That could be an article, it could be an email, it could be Siri or Alexa, it could be another virtual human. We want to be able to replace all of those things with a digital process so that you can create content in a matter of seconds, not in a matter of months. So what we do today is primarily translation and personalization of content. So you've already seen David Beckham examples, we build up an outlier, that's a great PR piece. Most of what we do is videos like this. So HR videos, uh, where you just want to scale your kind of uh, your reach with the videos and make something that's more compelling to, uh, to, to the audience than doing traditional subtitling or dubbing. So I'll just quickly play this. In this video, you will learn how to react in the case of an unhappy customer. Neste vídeo, irá aprender a reagir no caso de que um cliente se encontre insatisfeito numa das nossas lojas. I think something that's quite interesting here is like, why would you not just subtitle it? Well, I can tell you that because I'm from Denmark and I'm used to subtitling and dubbing all the time, and it's not a very pleasant experience, right? <laughs> There's just something about a human face that is super ap appealing to all of us, and that's why we use human faces in all these different kinds of videos. But you remove that emotional connection when you start to introduce subtitles or you do dubbing, which is not synchronized at all. So in all the tests we've done, just shows that content that is just slightly altered like this so that it synchronizes with the new voice actor has a massive impact on people's comprehension of content and their emotional connection to the content. So that's super interesting. The second thing we're doing is personalization of video, um, which is also kind of a virtual human, a virtual assistant type of use case in a way. So what we can do here is we can go in and we can change certain parts of a video. So we can insert names, cities, location, product names, whatever we want to do, we basically do it. Just quick to show what that looks like in an AI-generated fitness assistant, for example, which is going to be coming out quite soon with a, a very big brand. Hi, Joshua. You're killing it. You just set a new personal 20K running record. With a total time of 23 minutes, you are now in the top 9% of all users. So we generate this video in half a second. It's been served for an API. And each of these videos, for most of our customers have billions of different variations, right? So some of the cool things we're working on here, unfortunately I can't show it, uh, it's because it's not live yet. But with Reuters, for example, we're doing AI-generated sports reporting. So if you think of that as like database-driven storytelling, you have a big table, we have all the new sports results. And from that, we basically generate a 40-second long video of a presenter talking about those sports results. So he'll mention uh, which, uh, which clubs are playing, who scored the goals, uh, penalties that happen, whatever you have it. And it's all generated 100% automatically, and we can do that in any language as well. That's a big, big thing, right? Because for these guys, they don't have the resource to report on every single sports match that happened in the world. Third or second league cricket, uh, for example, in India, they don't have a visual asset for that. That's just a number in a database. But with these kind of systems, we can actually scale that and produce these media assets um, uh, in, in a very, very scalable way. We're also doing work with BBC where we can do personalized weather reports. So we can take your geolocation from your browser or from your Alexa device, which is where this is going to live. And it'll give you a weather report that's personalized to you. Um, finally, we're also doing personalized sales outreach, maybe a little bit more boring, but, but quite effective. So creating videos where you can insert names, companies, use cases, whatever you want to do. We're basically taking video from being a one-to-one -one communication tool to being a mass communication, oh, sorry, from being a mass communication tool to being a one-to-one -to -one communication tool. And we're really, really excited about that. So that's quite perfect with the MUFIC. Uh, thank you. And if you want to see some of this stuff in action, just find me after the fact, and, uh, and I can show you some of the stuff on my computer. Wow. That is a pretty mind-blowing presentation.